Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today got a one month follow up from my Kubuntu 1404 review. As many of you remember, uh, you know, I started using uh, Kubuntu 1404 as my primary distro about a month or so ago, and um, you know, just wanted to kind of give everybody my overall impressions, what I've thought, and and, and uh, you know where we go from here, and all that sort of thing. Um, so let me hit the highlights first. Uh, one, it's been a rock solid distributions. I haven't had any crashes, no problems like that. No, you know, um, you know, everything just seemed to work out of the box. Um, so that was great. Um, an, another big aspect uh, was some of the apps that I was able to use and were, you know, kind of. Uh, defaults that came with Kubuntu. Number one on that list has got to be uh, Dolphin. This, uh, you know, as far as a default file manager, this has got to be the best file manager I have ever worked with. Um, the fact that you can easily set up the the dual pane mode, drag and drop. Um, your your uh, I guess probably the easiest way to describe it is the hot links, the, the little places list here, easily configurable. Um, you know, while there's a lot of activity going on in this file manager, it's organized, it makes sense. Um, there's uh, plenty of extensions, extra features, that sort of thing that you can add to it. It's very configurable. You know, it is. Yeah, everything that I would want out of a file manager. Um, while I was running GNOME, uh, GNOME 3, um, I got pretty fed up with uh, GNOME files, which is now, or, you know, it's now called GNOME files, it used to be called Nautilus. I pretty much got fed up with that because of all the features that had been stripped out of it. And, you know, I had been running Nemo, which was the uh, you know it's the uh, the the cinnamon based derivative of the old Nautilus you know before they stripped out all the files or stripped out a lot of the features and it, you know it was doing pretty well it's not quite as well organized as uh, as as Dolphin is I really like Dolphin and actually there's a uh, there's a couple of um, Qt based um, uh, uh, file managers, you know, besides Dolphin that I want to try out. One is Crusader. I've been reading a lot about it. I'd like to get that thing on this desktop, try it out, see what I think about it as compared to uh, as compared to Dolphin, and you know, go from there and whatnot. But anyway, Dolphin is freaking awesome. Um, Caden Live which I have been using that as my video editor since day one for the first time. It looks good. Uh, there's no readability issues. There's I haven't had any crashes. It's just, it's working awesome now that I'm using it inside of a KDE environment. Um, so I'm loving that aspect of it. Uh, other Other applications that have been KDE based there's been there's been a little bit of learning curve as far as learning you know there were ones that you know maybe I used it once or twice before but you know not on a daily basis so there's been a little bit of a learning curve uh, but in general I like the KDE philosophy of having tons and tons of options and you can configure things to the nth degree um, all that is freaking awesome now kind of the flip side of all that configuration is that you can spend a lot of time uh, tweaking things and getting it exactly the way you want it uh, whereas um, you know in a, in a GNOME environment you wouldn't have as many options so um, you know there's a flip side to you know to both it's you know one of those double-edged sword things but uh, you know personally I really like having all of those options Coming from Arch Linux, one of the nice things was the uh, the installation process. It was much quicker, um, and you know after the installation, 
went down, it basically came down to adding a couple of extra applications that uh, I would use on a daily basis, and boom, I was ready to go. Um, obviously, you know, tons and tons of tweaking that I've done to my my appearance and all that kind of stuff. But as far as getting all the software on there and and getting it set up and that, it was you know almost ready to go out of the box. Um, once again, there's a flip side to that. The 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 plus to you know having come from from working in Arch is that I only installed the applications that I needed. Um, whereas with Kubuntu, you're getting what uh, what Kubuntu gets gives you, and you know from that point you can either add or take away applications. Um, but you're not necessarily starting with a clean slate. Depending on where you're coming from, that could be a good or bad thing. Um, on one, like I said, on one hand, it was nice that I was ready to go so quickly. On the other hand, there's a lot of applications installed on this desktop that I have no need for, and I really wasn't going to test and whatnot. Um, yeah, I could have taken the time to go and get rid of them, um, but you know I have just left them on the desktop. Not a real big deal, but uh, you know, like I said, I like to point out all sides of the issue. So got that going on. Let me and let me check my notes so I don't lose where I'm at. Um, okay, that that covers the bulk of the um, uh, of the. Uh, Oh, and one other thing, and that comes down to uh, using uh, GTK applications on uh, KDE. Uh, and if you haven't seen it yet, I did a quick video on on making KDE applications look good, or on on making GTK applications look good in KDE. And that'll basically apply to you know any KDE distribution. Um, but it's easier in KDE to get GTK applications to look good as opposed to trying to get KDE applications to look good in a GTK environment such as GNOME 3. Um, going back to the Caden Live example, it never looked good. No matter what I did, I mean, even with, um, you know, I, I, I downloaded um, uh, both Qt and KDE application or uh, settings managers so that I could go and tweak the look there and it helped but it was never good um, uh, in 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 the uh, KDE environment I think they do a better job of dealing with with the the GTK theme um, having said that okay some issues that and it's not they're not major issues, but it, it's stuff that uh, uh, was a little bit of an issue for me, at least. And part of that is coming from an Arch background, is that I was always used to having the very latest packages available. I don't have that here. Um, now, you know, I've got stable packages, but they're not the latest. And it's been a little frustrating for me to try and get <clears throat> the the uh, the most recent packages so that I can do the testing, do the reviews, that sort of thing. Um, and plus, that's just my personality that, you know, a, uh, a new version of, you know, whatever piece of software comes out and I've got to get my hands on it. Um, you know, that's just me. Uh, if you're a person that, that, that prizes the stability over the new features, then that's not going to be a big deal for you. For me, it's been a constant irritation. Um, now, as far as sitting down and actually getting work done, uh, Kubuntu 14.04 has been great. Um, so there's that. Um, the other, and once again, not a huge deal, um, but as far as the available software in the repos, as much as Ubuntu is, uh, for, for your average user, got the biggest variety of software, 
um, it nowhere compares to Arch once you include stuff that is in the Arch user repository. And if you're not familiar with Arch user repository, basically it is a repository where Arch users from all over the world, they can go and, and do the compiling um, and, and set up the uh, and set up packages for you to download. Um, you know, so you don't have to go through the whole uh, building of a package from a tar file. And you know, once again, while there is tons and tons of software available uh, for Ubuntu, it just doesn't compare to what's available for Arch, um, uh, which is kind of funny because having uh, done some reviews of Debian recently open uh, and I'm looking at OpenSUSE right now uh, Fedora all of those when it comes to available software can't compare to Ubuntu um, so I guess it's just a matter of scale um, you know and there have been a few things where I have gone and downloaded the tar file and done the compiling myself um, and you know it's it's certainly not hard to do but it is time consuming it's a whole lot easier um, to uh, you know to open up Pac-Man in Arch and just download and install a package from there than spending however long it takes to do the compiling by hand another issue that I ran into it and this is not unique to uh, to Kubuntu, this is uh, you know just a general KDE thing, and that is Kmail. While Kmail is great in all the options that it gives you, it is a royal pain in the butt to set up, especially if you are not using an email service like uh, Yahoo, Google, one of those. You know, say you got a company email, or you know you got a website and. Um, you know, you you've got uh, you've got your your email through that server or whatnot. Um, it took me freaking forever, even knowing what all of my uh, my settings were, to get that thing set up and configured. Um, it's you know, now, like I said, if if you've got Gmail or uh, or you're using um, you know, say Yahoo Mail or one of those services like that. You know, it'll go out and find all the settings for you. Boom, you, you know, you put in your email uh, address and password, and boom, it'll find everything else for you. Um, if you're using, like I said, the company email or whatnot, it is a pain in the butt to, con to configure. Um, and, you know, why it has got to be so complicated, I don't know, because essentially in Thunderbird, I had to put in a little more than my email and password. Um, I needed to tell um, uh, Thunderbird the uh, uh, my uh, uh, my incoming and outcoming server names, and but it was able to find the ports and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, automatically. Um, Kmail selected some ports for me, but they were completely wrong. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure what what's the why it has to be so complicated. Anyway, um, you know it was. Now once I got past the frustration of setting that thing up, it's it's been great. Um, I love the the notifications that I get. It integrates um, my Google Calendar with my Google account. I mean. All that stuff has been great. It was just a pain in the butt to set up. Um, and really, that kind of covers all of the the bad things that I had. And uh, like I said, there most of them are not major issues, and for the most part, most of it will not affect um, your average user, um, especially if you are somebody that just wants to set the desktop up and get down to getting work done. Um, a lot of it just comes down to, you know, because of the work that I'm doing as far as, um, you know, doing the, doing the reviews, the testing and whatnot, uh, that's where it comes into play.
Anyway, that about finishes this little video up. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, give us a big old thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. As always, leave questions, comments, all that kind of stuff down below, and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. And I will see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.